Do you do you see it? Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, let me check on YouTube. Okay, you are online. Okay, thanks. Thanks, yeah. yeah. I need to jump to another meeting, but I will come back when I can. Okay, sure. Okay, bye. Bye bye. So I think we are online. Yes. So let's get started. Uh, first of all, sorry for the delay. Uh, hello, uh, my name is uh, Yahya. Uh, today I will be presenting our work, UTR, on uh, uncovering the operation of the Indiram Romer protection mechanism. This paper published at uh, Micro 2021. So let's start with a quick summary. Uh, first, Rohammer, as we all know, uh, the ROHAM vulnerability of modern DRAM chips is a critical reliability and security issue. And DRAM vendors implement uh, target row refresh to protect their DRAM chips against ROHAMR. And however, target row refresh is an obscure on the commodity and proprietary ROHAMR mitigation technique. Due to its proprietary nature, their security guarantees are not uh, proven and cannot be st easily studied. So therefore, in this work, we try to explain, we try to answer these questions. Is TRR triple as secure? And how can we validate its security guarantees? So to this end, uh, just one second. Okay. Uh, to this end, we proposed UTRR, a new methodology uh, that leverages uh, data retention failures to uncover the inner workings of TRR and study its security. At a high level, UTR uh, works in two steps. Uh, first, we for UTR profiles uh, the retention time of a row R, and then finds when the TR refreshes that R, uh, that certain row R, to understand the underlying uh, mechanism of TR. And using UTR, we analyzed 45 uh, DDR4 DRAM modules from uh, three major DRAM vendors. And through this analysis, we have we make some several observations, and without these observations, we crafted new Rohammer access patterns that will bypass the TRR mechanism and cause Rohammer benefits. So our results show that first, all 45 modules we tested are uh, vulnerable to Rohammer. Second, uh, almost uh, in many modules, almost all of the rows uh, exhibit at least one row bit split, and finally. Uh, our access pattern can cause up to seven Rohammer bit fill-up in an eight-byte data word, making ACC ineffective. <coughs> so uh, we believe that UTR can uh, enable uh, more uh, secure Rohammer protection mechanisms in the future. So this is the output line of my talk, and let's start with uh, basic theorem background. <laughs> so here we see a typical with the CPU and DRAM module that has several DRAM chips. And each chip has, uh, there are multiple banks in it. And uh, these banks are organized as a two-dimensional array of, array of DRAM cells. And <clears throat> a DRAM cell stores a single bit of in information as a electrical charge. <coughs> uh, and in the bank, the cells are vertically connected to the sense amplifier, uh, which can read or write the data from the cell. And also the cells are or, or organized horizontally as DRAM rows. So to access the DRAM row, we the memory controller first issue an activate command. And this activate command basically it loads the DRAM row data to the sense amplifier, where the data can be accessed with uh, read or write commands. After that, a memory controller must issue a precharge command to close the DRAM row so that an another row can be opened later. So each DRAM cell encodes information in fundamentally legal capacitors. Here is a simplified diagram of a DRAM cell. Uh, the data stored in the red capacitor and the access transistor connects capacitor to the bit line. <laughs> and there are 
multiple uh, charge leakage paths and uh, where charge can enter or exit uh, unideally. The important thing to note that if the is that the stored data can be corrupted if too many charge leaks. So this is a simplified diagram of capacitor voltage over time. And we have a threshold called uh, Vmin, which uh, under which we can no longer guarantee that the data can be correctly read. As long as uh, our voltage is above this Vmin threshold, uh, we can correctly read the data of the cell. And we call this uh, retention success. However, as soon as we go below the, this line, uh, we consider this the retention failure and our uh, VCA basically, VC basically a bit flip. In order to prevent these retention failures, uh, periodic refresh operations are issued to recharge the capacitor voltage and the time bit interval between the refresh commands basically are called a, a refresh window. So let's look at uh, raw hammer and the currently employed raw hammer protection mechanisms. So in order to access a DRAM row, let's say row two, the memory controller issues the activation command to open the row. Then uh, after serving all requests, it performs a uh, precharge command. It issues a precharge command to close the row. And uh, due to the increase, due to an increase in cell cell interference as a result of increased packing density, the rapidly activating a row uh, many times can cause bit flips in the nearby rows. And if you continue to access the row uh, more times, if, if, even more bit flips can occur. And this phenomenon is known as row hammer. And we refer to the rapidly activated uh, access row as an, access, uh, as an aggressive row and the rows containing bit flips as victim rows. So to protect their DRAM chips, the DRAM manufacturers uh, implement proprietary uh, mitigation mechanisms known as target row refresh or TRR. The key idea of TRR is to basically refresh nearby rows, uh, uh, victim rows, upon detecting a potential aggressor row. And so let's look at how uh, TRR operates at a high level. Uh, the TRR mechanism basically detects an aggressor uh, as a result of repeatedly activating and precharging uh, the, pre the same row. And uh, after that, uh, if TRR mechanism ref uh, receives a refresh command, it piggybacks the TRR induced refreshes uh, to do uh, aggressor, uh, to do neighbor victim, potential victim roles to refresh them and thereby uh, preventing Rohammer bit Phillips to occur. <coughs> Although this is how TRR operates at a high level, uh, with different vendors uh, implement different TRR mechanisms and we don't know their exact operation. Uh, therefore, we cannot study their uh, secret, we cannot study their uh, security properties and make sure they are fully secure. Therefore, in this work, uh, we try to uh, we study in DRAM TRR mechanisms to first understand how they operate, assess their security, and secure DRAM completely against raw hammer. So now I will be talking uh, about uh, our methodology of for uncovering TRR method operations. Uh, we proposed few TRR, a new methodology to uncover the inner workings of TRR mechanisms. The key idea of TRR is to use basically the data retention failures as a side channel to detect when a certain row is refreshed by a TRR mechanism. Uh, UTR consists of two main components, row scout and TR analyzer. Row scout uh, finds a set of DRAM rows that meet certain requirements as needed uh, by TR analyzer and identifies their data retention times of these rows. <coughs> and the second part, TR analyzer, uses these previous uh, row scout provided rows to distinguish between TR induced and regular refreshes and uh, builds an understanding of the underlying TRM mechanism. Uh, let's look at these uh, the parts in more detail. Uh, first, row scout. The goal of row scout is to identify a list of useful DRAM rows and their retention times. 
and to Rose God must find first uh, Rose with consistent retention times. This is critical to, for UTR to correctly infer if a row has been refreshed by a PR induced refresh operation. And secondly, uh, Rose God must also find multiple rows or row groups that are located at certain configurable distances and have the same retention time. And this is regard so the, that a UTR can observe whether or not a TR mechanism can refresh multiple uh, potential victim rows at the same time. Now I will explain uh, the row scout operation using a flow chart. So first, row scout searches for DRM rows that have a uh, retention time team. Row scout provides this uh, retention time basically simply by initializing a row with a known data pattern, such as all ones, then it waits for a team and checks for retention bit flips. If it has retention bit flips, then that means, this means that the retention time of the, that row is basically T. And step one uh, outputs others of this retention time T. Second, uh, row scout puts together rows that have certain row address listed among them as indicated by the configuration parameter, what we call row group layout. Here is an example row group layout, uh, which has that has three uh, rows indicated by V, and there they are one row apart from each other. And depending on how many rows are found in step one, and how many of them can be combined to match this uh, particular uh, row group layout, step two outputs the candidates row groups a set of candidate row groups. If the candidate row groups are fewer than needed, uh, row scout basically increases the team and goes back to step one. Otherwise, uh, row scout uh, need to make sure these rows, candidate rows are uh, consistent. And the row scout basically runs the profiling, um, retention time profiling operation multiple times to make sure that they are constant consistent and uh, it results it outputs the row groups if the row groups are need uh, are fewer than needed again uh, it will increase the t and goes back to uh, step one otherwise it will output the uh, row groups as retention profile drops <coughs> now look, let's look at the second part tr analyzer the goal of tr analyzer is to use the row scott provided uh, rows to determine when a TR refreshes a victim row. So at a high level, uh, TR analyzer runs a, a certain DRAM access pattern. And second, it analyzes monitors retention failures in uh, row scout provided rows to determine when TR refreshes any of these rows. And third, based on when and which of the row scout provided rows are refreshed, uh, by the TR mechanism, the user develops an understanding of the underlying TR operation. <clears throat> now uh, let's look at a general TR analyzer experiment. As the first step, uh, TR analyzer initializes retention profile rows with known data. It also, uh, it also uh, initializes some aggressive rows. The user specifies aggressive rows in locations relative to the retention profile rows, for example, here we have a row group with three victims that are uh, one row apart from each other. And the user uh, can specify one or two aggressor rows uh, between the victim rows. And hammering these aggressor rows would probably disturb the, these, uh, uh, the remaining three victim rows. Second, the analyzer perform, performs a set of operations to reset the internal state of the uh, TRM mechanism so that it isolates uh, the actual experiment from the initialization and the uh, previously uh, performed experiments. Uh, after that, if TRM analyzer does not activate any of the victim rows for their profile retention time team, we expect to see a retention bit failures in when we read the data back and check for bit failures. So that uh, in order to make TR perform a refresh, uh, TR induced refresh operation, <coughs> DRAM has to receive a refresh command. And uh, TR analyzer issues this refresh command when the victims are not refreshed for the half of T. This is basically ensure that uh, 
is to ensure that uh, a victim role retain its data correctly until it's potentially refreshed by until it's potentially refreshed by the TR induced refresh. And also it corrects it can also correctly remiss its data after it's refreshed and uh, the until the TR analyzer reads the data. <coughs> to analyze how accessing an aggressor row affects the row that TRR detects as aggressive. The analyzer activates and precharges the aggressor road by hammering an aggressor row with an individual hammer count. And the analyzer can understand how hammering, how hammers affect the decision of the PRR uh, about uh, on which rows to refresh, basically. And along with the aggressor rows, uh, the analyzer can also use some dummy rows to. Uh, analyze how to make the aggressor rows undetected by TRR. A dummy row is simply a random selected row in the same bank uh, that is not an aggressor or a victim row. <laughs> TRR analyzer provides a various configuration parameters to study uh, various access patterns. Uh, overall, the TRR analyzer user understands how, to, uh, how a certain TRR mechanism operates uh, based on when the TRR mechanism refreshes uh, which of the retention profile rows. So let's look at some of the observations and our uh, newly crafted Rahmer access pattern that bypass the uh, TRR mechanisms. Uh, so to implement UTRR, uh, we used uh, and conduct DRAM, real DRAM experiments. Uh, we use DRAM Bender and FPGA based test DRAM testing infrastructure. Uh, we use DRAM Bender because it provides fine grained control over DRAM commands and time parameters and temperature. In our study, we study 15 DDR4 DRAM modules from each, uh, from each of the three major DRAM vendors. And in the paper, we have a paper table that provides the detailed information about the test modules. So let's start with the observations we made uh, from the, the TR implementation of Vendor A. So Vendor A performs three types of TRR. The first one is uh, regular refresh, like every, like every DRAM does. In addition to the regular refresh, uh, Vendor A's uh, TR mechanism can perform two types of TR capable refreshes. We refer to them as TR, TRF1 and TRF2. So in this timeline, each tick represents a refresh command that the memory controller issues periodically. And during the first eight refresh, the DRAM chip performs regular refresh operations. And on the ninth chip, uh, the TRM mechanisms performs TRF1. The next eight chips, the next eight uh, refresh, refresh commands performs regular refreshes. And the 18th uh, refresh command performs uh, TRF2. Uh, overall, the TRR mechanism uses every ninth refresh to command to perform TRF1 and TRF2 in an interrelated manner. Let's look at the, how TRF1 and TRF2 works. Uh, we suspect that the TRR uh, implements a counter table to keep track of repeated activated rows, potentially aggressive rows. The table has 16 entries where each entry has contains a row address and the counter value to indicate the accumulated memory count of the corresponding row. So when, tier, when performing tier F1, uh, the TRM mechanism refreshes the neighbor rows, potential victim rows of the row ID that corresponds to the largest value in the table. So we took the largest counter value from the table. On the other hand, tier F2 uses a pointer that indicates the row ID from the table to refresh its uh, potential victim rows. Uh, after performing uh, TRF2, the TRF2 pointer advances to the next entry in the table in a circular match. <coughs> and based on our based on these observations, we craft a new uh, Rohammer access pattern that circumvents the TRM mechanism of vendor A. So our, our approach is crafting a Rohammer access pattern is to aim for having the attack aggressor row discarded from the counter table before the DRAM refresh command. With this, uh, our goal is that the uh, TRF1 and TRF2 to pick any row in from the counter table 
which only consists of Tamir, which only which only consists of Tamir uh, activation of Tamir rows. So for this, uh, we craft the following access pattern. Immediately after a refresh comment, uh, we hammer two rows, A1 and A2, that are one row apart from each other uh, to perform a double-sided row hammer attack. And we hammer them, we, we hammer each of them n times. Uh, after that, to discard A1 and A2 from the counter table, we hammer 16 different dummy rows, n plus one times each. So by hammering the dummy rows more than the aggressor uh, rows, A1 and A2, we make TR, the TR replace A1 and A2 in the counter table with the dummy rows. So uh, doing so, we basically prevent the TR mechanism from detecting aggressor row since both TRF1 and TRF2 can detect a row from the counter table and the counter table contains only dummy rows. The important thing is here to execute this row hammer uh, access pattern. It's important to synchronize access, access with the refresh commands to perform aggressor and dummy uh, row hammers at the right time. So we conclude that uh, one can bypass Vendor's ACR mechanism by discarding the actual uh, aggressor rows from the counter table by using dummy rows. Let's look at the uh, vendor space TR implementation. Uh, differently from vendor A, uh, vendor B has only one type of TR capable refresh. And we observe that it uh, uses uh, four refresh commands. Uh, we observe that a, ref a TR capable refresh happens on every fourth refresh command. So we make two key observations regarding how the TR mechanism of vendor B operates. So first, TR probabilistically samples the, samples the address of an activated row as an potentially aggressive row. And second, <laughs> a newly sampled row overrides the previously sampled row, even if the previous sampled row didn't have time to, didn't get a TRI capable refresh, basically. So basically, a TRI capable refresh comment targets the row address that has been last sampled by the TR mechanism. So to supplement the TRM mechanism of vendor B, our approach is to maximize the probability of having a sampled dummy row by having a dummy row as many times as possible, possible before the next TRI capable refresh. So after a TRI capable refresh, we start hammering aggressor A row A1 and A2 to perform double-sided hammering. After uh, we hammer DRAM row many times in order to get to the get the TRM mechanism sample another row activation, these dummy activations, and overrides the previous list, previous sample, which potentially includes, includes one of the rows A1 or A1 and A2. As we hammer the dummy rows more, the, we increase, we basically increase the probability of uh, having the dummy row sampled and uh, detected by the following triarchy refresh. <laughs> So to conclude, uh, one can circumvent vendor B's TR uh, implementation by overwriting a sampled aggressor role by making the TR mechanism sample a demi role before the TR capable refresh operation. Now let's look at the, uh, our uh, results of the, our new access patterns. So leveraging this observe and this leverage Leveraging these observations, we crafted uh, new row hammer access patterns that are across the three TRR of three major DRAM vendors. So, and to evaluate the effectiveness of these patterns, we performed real DRAM chips on 45 DDR4 DRAM modules. And we observed that uh, new, DRAM, new access patterns can cause a large number of row hammer access or hammer bitfields. Let's look at the effectiveness of our patterns in a DRAM row granular too. So this plot shows for each of the 45 modules we test, the fraction of rows that experience at least one row, row hammer bit flip compared to all rows in a bad DRAM bank. First, uh, as we can see, all 45 modules we tested are vulnerable to our new row hammer access patterns. And uh, in 20 of the modules, uh, our row hammer access patterns cause bit flips in almost all of the rows. 
but why are why some why are some modules are less vulnerable? We find that this is it is because of three main reasons. So first, these uh, some modules are basically uh, fundamentally less vulnerable to hammer, meaning that the rows in those modules can tolerate a higher number of hammers and they require a, a higher number of activations before experiencing a hammer flip. Second, uh, some modules implement a different TRM mechanism that our custom patterns are not as effective. And we believe that by using uh, we believe that understanding more of those different TRM mechanisms, we can uh, craft a more effective Rohammer access pattern. And finally, some modules in the of the vendor team implements a unique role organization that appears to mitigate the Rohammer at a DRAM circuit level. And we conclude that although some rows, some modules are less vulnerable, our access pattern successfully circumvents the TR implementation of all three major DRAM vendors. <clears throat> so what about ECC? Can ECC protect against our access patterns? The short answer is no. Uh, ECC implemented in modern systems can have system works on uh, data chunks and we use eight byte data chunks. And the ECC can correct one bit errors uh, in a data chunk and ECCs can detect two bit errors but cannot correct or detect or more uh, bit errors. And this plot shows individual for each vendor. Uh, the distribution of uh, eight byte data chunks that have one to a seven bit Rohammer bit flips. As we can see, the majority of uh, the data chunks are those that have only a single Rohammer bit flip, which can be corrected using a typical CCC. However, our Rohammer access pattern can cause at least three bit flips in modules of, in modules of all three vendors. And further, uh, we see up to seven bit flips in many data words, which the ECC cannot correct or detect. And we conclude that the conventional DRM ECC cannot protect against our uh, new Rohammer patterns. <coughs> Uh, in the paper, we have more observations regarding how the TRR mechanism of the theory of vendors operates and a detailed description of our Schrammer, uh, our newly crafted access patterns and their sensitive tendencies, and also some observations, some observations and results for individual modules. So let's uh, let me quickly conclude my talk with a quick summary. The Rohammer vulnerability of modern DRM is the critical uh, reliability and security threat, and DRM vendors uh, implement target row refresh in their DRM chips. TR is an obscure, undocumented, and proprietary Rohammer mitigation mechanism technique. And due to their proprietary nature, the security guarantees of these DRM mechanisms cannot be easily studied. And in this work, uh, we try to answer these questions Is DRR fully secure? How can we validate the security guarantees? And for this purpose, we propose to UTR any, any methodology that leverages data retention failures to uncover the inner workings of TRR and study its security. <laughs> so through these analysis, uh, we make several observations. Uh, using UTR, we tested 15 modules from each of the three major DRAM vendors. And through this analysis, we make several observations about the TRM mechanisms they implement. And using the observations, we crafted new Frohammer access patterns. <laughs> and our result shows that first, uh, all 45 modules we tested are vulnerable to our new Frohammer access patterns. Uh, second, uh, our access pattern can cause uh, at least one bit flip in almost all rows in many modules. And third, we observed after uh, we observed up to seven bit Rohammer bit flips in an eight byte data word, making ECC ineffective. And we conclude that TR uh, does not provide security against Rohammer, and one can easily uncover and craft, a, um, craft an access pattern that will bypass a certain TRM mechanism. And we hope that UTR can facilitate the development of new Rohammer attacks and more secure Rohammer protection mechanisms 
in the future. So thanks for your time. Uh, if you have any questions, please 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 feel free to uh, ask. I guess there is no question. Yeah, uh, no questions for me about uh, your presentation. I just wanted to ask you if maybe you have time just after this to do a quick meeting for my project. Yeah, sure. Uh, after, uh, let me first uh, finish the YouTube live stream. Yeah.